Definitely. All right, folks, I think we're at time. So why don't we um, why don't we get started? Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, I'm sure that there'll be others filing in once we get going as well. Uh, I just wanted to welcome you to the second uh, in a series, uh, workshop series, which we're calling the Skills Skilled Advantage uh, series, where you'll hear from me and all one of my colleagues uh, meeting with um, uh, our customers and actually identifying success stories and customers that we feel have got a fantastic story to share. Um, some of the challenges that they face, some of the uh, the work and the focus that the, they're prioritizing from a skills perspective. And then we just kind of talk through over the next half an hour, uh, our engagement uh, with said customer. And today you're gonna hear from uh, the Healthcare of uh, Ontario Pension Plan or HOOP uh, as we call uh, them. And uh, Daniel uh, Macknick is gonna be introducing himself in just a moment um, and we'll dive into the main uh, session. So I'll take you through the agenda in a moment. A couple of um, housekeeping slides, first of all, that we have to go through. Um, essentially, this is our safe harbor uh, statement around forward-looking uh, statements. So essentially, you'll hear best practices here today. You'll hear some forecasting, but there's nothing that absolutely um, locks us into anything that's being discussed today. It's for informational purposes only. So hopefully, uh, if you want to take a read through that, you can uh, grab the recording, pause it and read it back verbatim. Uh, we won't go through it all today because we're limited for time. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the beginning of us, the second one of a series, um, the Skilled Advantage series from ServiceNow Education. Um, this link will be shared out uh, via QR code and it's an interactive session. So what we want to try and do is make sure that we capture uh, any questions that you do have. We're saving time at the end for Q&A, but please you know, do use the chat as well if you have specific questions. We'll, we'll try and address them. We have colleagues waiting online that can help to respond to some of those questions. Um, but anything that we don't capture in real time, we'll make sure it goes into the Q&A section at the end of the call. Um, there is a little bit of surveys in here. We just want to try and use this as an opportunity to understand who's in the room, who's listening. It might have a, a, a sway or a, a, an effect on how we answer specific topics or ask specific questions. I want to make sure that we're trying to represent all of you in the Q&A uh, today between us and uh, Dan. Um, and then at the end of the event, you'll be prompted to fill out a short survey just to let us know what you thought. We, we had some excellent feedback from the last session. We listened to it. We're adapting and making sure that the content is punchy and giving you the level of detail that you need. So, you know, please do give us uh, a couple of minutes feedback at the end of the session, just so that we can help to shape these um, sessions going forward. Okay, so with that, housekeeping out of the way, here's the agenda. So uh, five sections ready for today. You're gonna meet the presenters. I'll quickly introduce myself in a moment and then I'll hand it over to Dan. Um, and then Dan's really gonna take uh, 10, 10, 12 minutes to talk about the history of Hoop and ServiceNow, particularly on the, on the Now platform. What does that story look like over time? And then we're gonna really start drilling into the talent and skilling uh, challenges that they were facing and how we've worked together and collaborated together to make um, a, a tremendous success story actually of the hoop uh, relationship. And I'm gonna make sure that Dan digs right into the human element, not just the technical side of the success uh, story that we've seen with hoop. Um, then just to wrap up, we'll talk about some of the upcoming world forums. Um, and then it's the Q and A section where we hand over to you all lovely people. If you have questions, comments uh, that you want to throw at us before we wrap up the call today, we're going to try and get it all done in about 35, 40 minutes. So we won't drag too long. Um, but don't miss the opportunity to get your questions into the chat if it's something that you really want us to, to cover um, today. Okay, so I'll quickly introduce myself. Um, I was on the previous session that we did with McKesson. If you've seen that recording um, on the community pages, if not, do please go find it. My name is Martin Hill. I'm the global leader for our customer acceleration uh, organization, which is essentially the customer training business. So ultimately responsible for how we engage customers, how we support customers from a consultancy perspective, and then also right the way through to the delivery of training to make sure that the engagement and the experience is a successful one. Um, I'm based in the UK. I've been in with the company actually six years this week. I hit my sixth anniversary. Um, and so uh, really 
happy to be here and to engage with you all. There's been a series of World Forum events. I've been to uh, the London event, um, uh, and I was also at Japan. I'm also going to be in the, the New York event coming up soon. In between times, lots of other customer meetings as well. I'm having a real uh, fantastic time talking to customers and meeting with customers over the last month, I would say. And so it's really invigorating to hear input from uh, from you all. And please you know, don't um, shy away. If you want to reach out to me, I'll make sure that uh, my email address details come out at the end of the, the session as well so that you have access to to me if you want to uh, connect on, on any topic, um, especially today's session. So with that, I will ask Dan, um, our uh, co-presenter for the day, to, uh, to introduce himself briefly. Dan. Thanks, Martin. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Daniel Macknick. I am a senior manager and the ServiceNow platform owner at the Healthcare of Ontario Pension Plan. For those of you who may not know us, we are a defined benefits pension plan representing over 400,000 members in the healthcare sector in Ontario uh, with a fully funded status and net assets totaling of $113 billion in 2023. Uh, happy to elaborate on what fully funded status and all that stuff is, um, you know, offline or, or in the Q&A, but uh, our office is situated in downtown Toronto. And um, yeah, I've been working with the platform now for about eight years and uh, yeah, happy to dig into the content with y'all. Fantastic. Thank you, Dan. Should be a good session today, everybody. Uh, just to get us going, as I said, just to help us really get a feel for who's in the uh, in attendance today. Um, Quick question for you in the uh, survey tool, if you could just um, describe your uh, current role, what's closest to your current role so that we can get an idea. <clears throat> okay. So we're looking at a lot of individual contributors, some managers, some senior managers, uh, mostly individual contributors, I would say, looking at scores here. Okay, thank you everybody, almost half of the folks filling out the survey are individual contributors okay fantastic thank you for that and then one more quick poll question we're not going to poll you to death don't worry okay so here question two which department or function best describes the role for in which you sit within the organization okay specifically technology, specifically individual contributors. That seems to be pretty conclusive this time. Okay. 74% of folks on the call are in tech, in the tech department. So Dan, maybe keep that in mind as we go through some of the discussion topics. Uh, there's not very many marketing folks on the call or finance folks on the call. So uh, I think we can pretty much focus on ITSM and the, the ticket side of things uh, as well. So fantastic. My people. Yeah, your people. Absolutely your people. That's right. OK, so hopefully um, I can just start moving on now to allow Dan some time to really introduce um, introduce Hoop. I know he's already covered it at a high level, but really the relationship with service now um you know tell us about the product strategy the now product strategy um within hoop dan over that that prolonged period of time thank you yeah so um i'll preface this by saying that you know i'll touch on to whatever degree folks would like to hear my story i'm certainly happy to dig into that to whatever depth uh, once we get into the later discussions but i'll keep this maybe a little bit more high level for now um, so we, we started our journey, you know, roughly, uh, eight or so years ago, and, uh, we probably began much like a number of folks looking to replace kind of our ticketing system or ITSM tool at the time. Um, I was just, uh, you know, starting my, my journey in my career at Hoop as a service desk technician. Um, and, you know, it was... It was exciting, you know, it was new and uh, you know, there was a lot of challenges that we, we were, were dealing with, which I'm going to dig into shortly, but um, I'll flash forward a little bit to 2021. 
I was now a platform owner and had the pleasure of working with our friends in the legal division to onboard the legal service delivery module. Um, more recently, we've onboarded HAM and are well on our way towards implementing ITOM as well. Uh, our, our organization fluctuates to some degree throughout the course of the year, but uh, we're hovering around the you know, 1600 employee mark right now. 10 of which are on my core team, as well as some additional distributed developers across the organization. Um, next slide, please, Martin. So challenges. Um, you know, throughout our journey, we've seen a number of folks come and go, co-op co students, contractors, folks who have, you know, moved on to, to bigger and better opportunities, uh, which I'm encouraging of. Um, one of the key challenges that we face is scaling folks up as quickly as possible, right, to unlock the potential of the platform. Many of the individuals that we're hiring are arriving with little to no ServiceNow experience, uh, which largely is by choice and happy to dig into that as well. But training is critical for us because, as I said, folks are arriving, you know, with you know, little exposure to the platform. During the last eight years that I've worked with ServiceNow, we've seen rapid adoption by the business. We're continually approached by new lines of business who are looking to host their data on the platform and run their processes through the platform. And it can be challenging sometimes to understand kind of what the best path forward is for each of those unique use cases. Uh, as demand grew as well over the years, our community grew as well. So roughly four years ago, my team became a bit of a bottleneck for the organization. And so we made the difficult decision to open up our doors and adopt a distributed development model. We then started training ServiceNow champions, as we like to call them across the various teams in IT. You can imagine the headaches involved with attempting to train that many individuals whilst also attempting to keep the lights on for our own business stakeholders. Lastly, and maybe most importantly, I'm a big proponent of building up people and forming high-performing teams. In my mind, there's really no faster way to unlock innovation and value than by building a foundational team that supports and underpins everything that takes place on the platform. But getting there isn't easy. Every individual on that team and my team is unique. They all have their own wants and needs and aspirations and being able to provide everybody with opportunities for growth and empowering them to be their best selves can be a challenge in and of itself. Next slide, please, Martin. So how are we setting up our developers for success? How are we setting up the business for success? How did we effectively grow a community of over 40 distributed developers and manage it effectively? How are we leveraging the ServiceNow platform and ServiceNow training to unlock innovation for Hoop. My hope is that today with Martin, we'll talk through that and maybe more in today's discussion. I'll hand it back over to you, Martin. All right. Okay. Good stuff. Um, thank you, Dan. There's a there's a lot to unpick in there, um, and it's a real success story. So congratulations, first of all, the fact that you know you've actually actively sought to invest in your teams. The teams have grown curious and they've kind of expanded as the result and you're actually seeing investment um which is a, a fantastic story and a great endorsement for effective enablement um you did touch on there something around um different people needing different things and how did you uh, address that initially yeah i mean certainly you know, especially after we had moved to this distributed model, right? We're looking at very different teams, very different use cases. Um, some folks looking to just, you know, deliver exactly what their stakeholders are asking for. Some folks are looking to the horizon and looking to their own career aspirations, right? And seeing what the path of least resistance looks like for them. So I think that there isn't necessarily a one size fits all answer, but, you know, taking the time to understand people's needs, taking the time to understand where they see themselves. And I think, you know, one of the, one of the things that I, um, I'm a huge proponent of ServiceNow for is, is that path of least resistance. Like I've never mm -hmm. 
I've never seen a technology that has empowered people to be able to come in off the street, so to speak, and yeah. accelerate to the degree that they're seeing today. So, uh, you know, just on my team, I've, I've, like, as I said, I'm coming from the service desk. Um, I'm a huge proponent of building people up and training within from within. And so um, I've, I've hired a number of folks who have come in from the service desk, again, with little to no experience. I've personally trained them myself, um, but also I've empowered others to become trainers too. We've leveraged resources like Now Learning. Uh, there's a ton of other resources within the community. But I think to answer your question, you know, it, it really does take a bit of a personal touch to understand what people's goals are and, mm. and to be able to help them through that journey. Yeah, and I think that that's, that's a bigger topic, isn't it? And it's something that we're very, very passionate about, obviously, coming from the customer facing team. Uh, we want to engage with customers and identify where those gaps are. And the fact that you're right, they do, it, the demand varies from one customer to another or from one team to another or sometimes down to the individual. And it's important to assess what is the right delivery mechanism for that individual to be successful. But I also find that that has to become, that has to be uh, almost like a top-down uh, approach that a customer like yourself, uh, Daniel, I'm sure that not all of those 40 developers report directly into you. You have to have that, you know, top-down <laughs> ethos of, of developing people. Um, which sounds very healthy and it's not all that common. I have to say, you know, in some certain cases we see, you know, that certain departments are somewhat blocking uh, personal development and career development, which is always a challenge for us because we're, we are here to make sure that customers are successful on the platform. And sometimes training, you know, is the missing piece of the puzzle that they haven't uh, necessarily considered. I can tell you that having been at the last two world forums, the interest and demand for knowledge around the training offerings of what it is that ServiceNow can bring. Um, you know, they were the, 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 the busiest booths at the event, at the conference uh, events, actually people queuing up just to talk to someone around skills and enablement for ServiceNow. Just going back to Hoop, um, what are the main benefits that you think Hoop has seen through using the Now platform um, and then we can drill a little bit more into the individual skilling as well in just a moment. Yeah, yeah, no, and and let's circle back on that that top down conversation because I, I would like mm. to dig into that as well. But um, you know, we've, as I said, we started out with kind of just a basic ITSM, you know, ticketing system, right? We just needed a one to one replacement for what we had, and so mm. um, it it became apparent very quickly that the platform had more to offer. And so as we started building things up like our service catalog, uh, we had a few custom applications that we had built for specific lines of business. You know, folks started to pay attention. And at that point we needed to start really, if, if you're familiar with the concept of being sort of T-shaped or E-shaped in the individual with having, you know, disciplines across many different verticals, um, mm -hmm. we were finding a need to, to no longer just have generalists, right? I'm a big mm. proponent of being cross-functional. We're an agile shop. Uh, it's it's a great way to make sure that if, you know we can support each other. And if somebody is unwell or or you know what have you, life happens, right? Yeah. People can step into their shoes. But as we expanded across the business and we started unveiling more services, we are finding that there is a definite need to see subject matter experts evolving and and you know stepping up to the plate so to speak and so um it's it's interesting uh we've attempted to calculate the value that we've seen right and and we did yeah. this activity where we went through and we built this dashboard that actually you know for every automated catalog item that we built this is the number of hours we're saving at this rate of dollars etc cetera, etc cetera. And so no, we don't often look back on that, but sometimes it's fun to just look back and say, oh, we saved the organization like $300 million or something, right? But um, yeah. is it fair for us to continue to take credit for things that have been automated three years ago? I don't know, but it's it's a fun thing to look at and think about, certainly. Um, it is, and me metrics can always be, you know, 
uh, you know, s spun in slightly different directions to talk about the value that they bring. One question that I have, which is probably unfair one now, based on what you just said, um, is around the ROI for the training piece. Could sure. you could you think you could speak to that a little and you know illustrate what a difference the training element made? Yeah, I mean it's it it's some of it is intangible, right? Like there's a level of confidence and um you know there's there's anxiety that comes around with being unprepared. And so having an opportunity to take the training and and showing up with with you know the right tools in your toolkit. It's hard to measure, um, but I would say that as I go back to my comment about building high-performing teams and, and investing in people, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's a ton of value in making sure that team teams have psychological safety, right? And and to build a high-performing team that is almost foundational. And so, setting setting your team up for success by doing the training, setting the business up for success. By making sure that the folks working on those projects have the tools they need they need to be successful mm. it's hard to quantify it's, it's incalculable in my mind but it is it's something that i it's foundational to everything we do so um it, speaking to we've, I we've done sure we, we've ran we've ran similar we've looked into the data ourselves from from our side of the relationships to see how can we provide that, you know, the silver bullet metric that shows that training is really the thing that's making a difference. We actually do have a new report that's coming out in the next couple of weeks, uh, which looks at things like, um, you know, the average users using more of the features and benefits, quicker time to value, um, actually renewal rates. If somebody, if a customer is invested in training, we actually see higher adoption scores, better health scores, and also renewal rates. And so, yeah, it's an interesting time. We always like to refresh that data every year. Uh, mm -hmm. And so once we have it, we'll make sure that we share it with everybody uh, in the community so you can actually uh, get some of the latest um, customer survey data from, from us. Um, how about, uh, yeah, sorry, go on, Dan. Before we move on, sorry, Martin. Uh, one thing that I can say that is a little more tangible. Um, mm -hmm. I spoke to ITOM, right, that we were doing more recently. We've owned ITOM and those licenses for probably six years, right? So that, right. yeah, and yeah. that has just been shelfware that entire time, and it's largely because we didn't have the skills we needed to onboard it. So, I mean, that that in and of itself speaks to to the value of you know realizing that value much much sooner, and the opportunity costs that go along with it certainly. That's interesting. So part of my organization, the training solution consultants, that's what they do. You know, we actually engage with customers at different stages of their life cycle to try and identify where there is potential for an enablement plan. And sometimes it's, you know, when it's a brand new relationship or well, all the time, if it's a brand new relationship, but oftentimes it is customers that have had products that have been, as you say, shelfware for a while and the adoption scores are low. And this is an area that we want to try and become more proactive. And in fact, I'm going to I'm going to show everybody on the call something new that's coming from us in that space uh, a little bit later on today's call. Um, so what about from an individual career journey perspective? If we forget the technology side now, Daniel, if we speak a little bit more about the people side, I'm a huge advocate for enabling my team as well and making sure that they have everything that they need in order to move themselves forward. And I think you're right with the now platform the content is endless, you know, learning materials are there, you know, there is free content, 80% of our digital content is, is freely accessible to everybody. Um, but then of course, we have the certification programs, you have the specialist programs, um, um, the expert practitioner programs that uh, are available as well. Have you, have you actually baked in a training plan for each individual? Or is it something that they that you empower them to manage for themselves? Yeah, so um, the answer to that is kind of twofold. So there's actually sort of a mandatory component to working at Hoop in the ServiceNow ecosystem. Um, when we decided to move this to this distributed development model, we mandated that training is is, is you know required. Um, so the the fundamental courses that are available uh, through the the CSA. Uh, program, 
those are those are mandatory so right. just the you know just the level set like we're not we're taking training seriously and and we take you know the development within our platform quite seriously we have a number of guidelines in in governance defined um to be able to operate in this distributed development model but certainly for the individuals that want to do more and see more and deliver more for their clients and their their business stakeholders yes we we have built out plans and so um we have a bit of a skills matrix to find that that outlines kind of who who has uh you know the skills in in what areas and you know we've had discussions about what what really is the definition of a subject matter expert in a specific module or or business line or what have you and so um where the need arises we do build out a plan a long-term plan for folks but um i would say the vast majority of individuals are sort of learning organically and and as you know they have varying degrees of interest and um but yeah we have a, a foundational requirement for everybody to, to have that training certainly good Good. I like the fact that you've actually got a mandatory piece in there, which, you know, is enough to get people onto that ladder. And hopefully then, you know, once they're inside the now learning environment, it will help them to see what else is available and we can start pulling them along that journey uh, as well. So that's good. That actually leads quite nicely into uh, the last poll question that I have for today for other folks on the call. So thank you, Daniel, for, for covering that. Um, no just what we're trying to gauge from the folks that are still on the call. Um, how do you address training plans? Is that something that you consulted with us uh, directly or is it something that you do on your own or there is no plan or it's something that you're planning to do? Because this is actually a, a real focus area for our team uh, going into 2025. So this is a real valid test to see uh, the customer's appetite. Okay, still moving around a little, just give me a couple of seconds to let it settle okay so that's interesting so in most cases customers are uh delivering their own building their own training plans which is fine there's quite a lot there that don't have a training plan or haven't got to doing a training plan yet those are folks that i would certainly like to uh connect with um i think even even daniel when we started talking about this particular section of the conversation Daniel wasn't familiar with the fact that we do offer um, consulting services uh, around building out your, your your training plan for your teams. Um, and so I have a team of um, training solution consultants who are available for us to spend time with you and your stakeholders to help you uh, put that plan together. D, I know put my email address in the chat, um, but absolutely reach out to me we can arrange different ways for you to receive a training plan. One being that hands-on kind of consultancy piece, which, you know, can take some time, but delivers fantastic results. But I did just want to draw your attention actually to a brand new tool, which is coming to now learning next month, less than a month from now, I believe it's going to be the 25th of November. Um, the, my team training planner tool will be coming live and going online. Now, what that actually does is it's a, a, a survey tool, an interactive survey tool, which allows you to input information about the products that you're using, the size of the teams that you have, size of the organization that you have, and what the My Team Training Planner will do. It will create a guidance for you around team sizes, how many individuals and uh, specialists you might need in a specific role based on the information that you're inputting into the team. Then it'll actually build out training programs for those individuals and ultimately give you an idea of what it you know what costs you might be looking at uh, and a uh, period of time so just to let you know that this this tool is something that we've been building for some time and it will be coming available uh, next month we'll make sure that you're made well aware of that um, if anyone has any urgent need for a uh, connection to a training solution consultant where we can actually spend more time with you then please do reach out to me it's free service uh, both of these are so we'd be happy to uh, to engage. Okay, that's not a sales pitch. It's just an awareness um, for you all. Okay, great. So um, 
Daniel, I know that we're going to get to um, Q and A. Uh, thank you for covering in depth. Um, just one more, a couple of quick slides from me uh, for folks on the call. Um, we have some resources that we're sharing with you uh, as, as as the result of you uh, being here today. First first thing to note is there's an in-depth case study around uh, the, the relationship that we've had with um, Healthcare of Ontario Pension Plan. Um, and so you can hear qu direct quotes from Daniel uh, in there. We also have various links here to help you uh, identify the best ways to be skilling your team. There's also a global future workforce report around um, the state of um, skills and job demands across the key global markets in the era of AI. So how is AI affecting demand for skills and jobs in specific territories and specific industries? It gives you an opportunity to access that. Um, and then lastly, uh, attend a world forum. So I think there's a, a, there's a couple left uh, in the US. We still also have Paris uh, and Rotterdam coming up. I believe the reason that we've got these particular um, events highlighted, though, is that I'm going to be at New York. So, again, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to spend time meeting with you uh, and meet you at the event uh, on the 7th of November. And also, Dan, I believe you're going to be at the uh, Toronto event. Is that right? That's right. With bells Fantastic. on. We'll be there with bells on. So, uh, again, if... Uh, Anybody would like to hear more from Dan, feel free to reach out to me. We'll make sure to arrange uh, a meetup uh, point in the uh, expo hall um, whilst he's there. So fantastic stuff. All right. Thank you, Dan. I'm going to hand it over to Dieden, who's going to bring forward any questions from them. 